Uh, this next comedian, uh, he is a very funny man. He uh, helps organize some shows uh, all around town. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Stalker Tree! Here we go, Kevin Neal! How y'all doing tonight? Yeah, that sounds good. My name is Scott I'm also an American. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> You guys read the news or something? Is that what's going on? Yeah. I came over here 13 years ago, so I don't know what me. Uh, but I'm, like I said, living here now 13 years. I'm trying to learn my Dutch, and uh, it's hard to learn a language. It's a difficult language. It's the world's third hardest language. So some of the words have to be beaten Indian. Uh, I recently learned the word Anjane. Uh, <laughs> he knows the word. That means uh, to be slammed into. Yeah, are you using a sentence? Ik ben aangereden door het scooter klopzak. Which uh, unfortunately means I got slammed into by a scooter driven by an asshole. Uh, that's what this is about. It's, uh, I, I told I have to explain that I think like what the hell's going on. It's a gimmick, you know, I wish. If it was, I'd be able to do my arm, but as is, it's like I, I kind of have to practice this shit. I said a song the other day, trying to stretch my arm, and I realized the guy's looking at me and, Looks like I'm practicing to be a Nazi. <laughs> Let's face it, nobody wants a sauna with a Nazi. It's worse if it with some guy who's practicing, you know. If I make a fist instead, you know, so it looks like I'm, I'm trying to do a Black Panther thing. Suddenly, but not much. But uh, yeah, the, uh, there was a thing called a Beats Pad. Have you heard of this one? Another great word. It uh, means bike pad. And the essence of a Beats Pad is that you don't drive cars on it. So you can imagine my surprise when I looked up and saw the car drive on the uh, piece pad there. And then there was a scooter, also on the piece pad. He too was confused, so he was doing this, staring at the car. Which was unfortunate for me, because I came around the blind corner at that same exact moment, and uh, I was going to say to the driver, this is a bike path, you should drive the car on the, on, on the straight there, and the, and the scooter, you should pay attention to where you're going. But in the end, all I could say was, ah! And then there was a smash tailways and a bit of flying, and then uh, I did not stick the landing. Uh, I gotta be honest, I definitely did not stick the landing. I almost wish there was a video. Um, landed on the old arm over here in my hip, etc. I uh, decided I should uh, call a, you know, the old 911. Fortunately, I called 112 instead. 911 does not help here. And uh, a little safety tip, by the way, if you need an ambulance in the Netherlands and you really want the ambulance to come, and they ask you if you're passing out, you say yes. Because when I said no, he said, take a taxi. <laughs> but I could think on my feet, so I said, oh, I'm getting dizzy, I'm going to pass out. He said, we'll send an ambulance. And the ambulance got there, and the difference between the ambulance and the taxi is the ambulance had fentanyl, which I found helpful. You know, also easy to get in and out of it. Took me straight to the hospital, and uh, the hospital was even more helpful because they asked me, did I want morphine? Yes. <laughs> I would like some morphine. I actually asked me, did I want more morphine? Well, I guess I did. Morphine, my five-star drug. And uh, so they didn't really do much for me. I didn't get a cast or anything. They literally just put this thing around me. And uh, they called this conservative treatment. Nice way of saying the Dutch are really, really cheap. And uh, if I had fallen at the crucifixion, same thing. Put a vine around me, a little opium. Yeah. Try to stay off it. So I asked them, you know, what's going on with this thing? What's your prognosis on this? And they told me that uh, this is what they call a halath pindakath situation. <laughs> and if you don't speak Dutch, it, you didn't miss anything, because it's actually not at all helpful, these words, because it literally means, oh well, peanut butter. <laughs> See, it's not helpful. It's not at all helpful in any way, shape, or form. It wasn't helpful for me either as a, as a diagnosis. And uh, it's been a few months, and I'm going to have a CT scan. I might need surgery, and I asked, you know, what do they think now? And they gave me the least useful of all medical advice you get here, which is, it comes good. Yeah. And you've heard it, they, they tell it to everybody, and they have nothing else to say, it comes good. It's not even a good sentence, you know? The only time that is useful as feedback is when you're shopping around for a male prostitute. <laughs> How's that work? Oh, it comes good. <laughs> and the back end? Hey, that's been the cash. <laughs> I didn't think it squares the circle of that particular joke. But, uh, so, if, if you said you're dating, or you, you're both Dutch, you're both Dutchies, right? Oh, you're, you're the German. How long have you been together now? Three years? You live here, though, or? 
Yeah. And you speak Dutch as well? Or do you speak in English to each other? Or you German? Hey, perfect, perfect, great. So, like in, uh, first of all, there's a word that the Dutch use, it's the most confusing word to me, guys. It was one of the, for Alphalanders, that's Alphalanders, it's a confusing word, but that word is, uh, <laughs> I've never been poo pooed before, but uh, I've definitely been hand hand a few times. Yeah. I hear myself saying that when I'm sitting on benches and otherwise. <laughs> is that me? I don't it's, it does, there's worse times to hear that word. I think one of the worst times possibly to ever hear that word is like, you know, after sex. How was that, huh? <laughs> it's still better than hearing it before sex is all I'm saying. At least I think it is anyway. But uh, one of the cool things about living here in the Netherlands, I think it's, it's different as from being the American perspective. Because I don't know if you know it or not, but uh, America, we're really proud of our country. Still. Yeah, we don't watch the news. We have complete no idea what irony means. So if you ask an American best country in the world, they'll all tell you, it's America. You know, completely oblivious. Like the British, you know, ask them the best country, they'll say it's England, you know, because they believe in technology of the little country. But you ask a Dutch person, what's the best country in the world? They'll have a good Hello, the Netherlands? Nah. No. You think? With the weather? Yeah, it's this great place, you know. But that humility kind of makes this place even better. You know, again, America could use it. And that's the, the one Dutchest of all words is, you know, the word gezellig, which means, uh, you know, it's a, a, you know, it means a warm, wonderful night that we all make together. You know, like we, we made this gezellig evening, you know. And uh, it's a great word because it starts with a chef. It ends with a chef. It's got that cell in the middle, you know. <laughs> this is as Dutch as it gets. But, uh, and what, what, uh, just before I go, we have tourists here as well? Some tourists? Yeah. You know this uh, river behind me? You know, you know the edge? <laughs> you know, you ask a Dutch person, how do I get across the edge? They have no idea what you're talking about, you know? Because they pronounce it as I. But all us tourists, we know it as the edge. You know what I'm saying? And uh, one last little thing, because it's like, this is supposed to be an open night, so I'll take one shot at one thing. It's great to end on a, on a new thing. But uh, I've been recently told, my friend of mine told me that you should be uh, 100, uh, you take your height, centimeters, you minus 100, that should be your weight. So I'm 185, but I weigh 92. So either I have to lose the seven pounds or gain seven seven. So I'm going to try to gain a little height, all I'm saying. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much.